some more changes in the cockpit. I've gone further with the screens. I've got both side screens now angled downwards and giving me the sideways views. And I have to say I do think this is the best display combination that I've tried to date. And it's the one I'm going to keep for now. There's a lot of changes go along with this. I've first and foremost ditched the track IR. I'm not using the virtual cockpit. I've got outside well well I say outside views. It's the cockpit view which is essentially the out of the window view. I don't have ECCA anymore, no need for that. You've probably noticed I've screened off the the cockpit in a more realistic way. These bezels are now solid so we don't have gaps between the monitors. I've created some side windows so they're just side openings in the manner of windows. Now you may think these are just designed fairly ad hoc to look window like but um, it's more scientific than that. Actually what happens is if you sit in the pilot's seat and look to the left and right what you need to do is take a straight, I'm not sure if I can show you this, but take a straight edge now bearing in mind I've got a vertical framework at the, each side of the cockpit so you take this straight edge and you put it against the side wall and then you have to adjust the angle until it appears to be parallel with first of all the top edge of that angled sideways screen and, and that's where you put the top edge of the window. Then for the rearmost edge of the window again you take that straight edge put it flat against the side of the cockpit superstructure and position it so that it appears to be parallel to the rearmost or the outside edge of the side screen and then the same for the bottom and that gives you three sides and it looks kind of window like but most importantly when you're sitting in the cockpit seat and you look to the right what you see gives the appearance of an unrestricted outside view limited by the edges of the window of course that's uh, a trick of perception really and the, the only problem with that obviously if you move off axis up or down or forwards the illusion kind of starts to break down because you you look past the edges of the screen now to counteract that to some degree I've arranged to screen off the outside world by building kind of boxes around the ex exterior part of the monitors that works pretty well as well. I mean, it's it's bulky and it's fiddly to do. There's some work left to do. I've I've got to black out the inside of those boxes. Really, at the moment, it's just bare MDF. I, do, I did all, all this with you know scraps of MDF. It's done very crudely, I have to say, but it's effective even as it is. I I do just need to black out the interior of that box. Otherwise, it's not quite realistic. I'll probably do that by dismantling it and just painting it with matte black or something like that. And then I'm missing a dash as well. I'll, I'll, I'll create a simple dash just to finish that off. I've been sitting in the cockpit and flying this thing. It's just, well, I don't know, over, over hype it. It's not, you know, it's not magical or anything like that, but, you know, it's just... I think going to that exterior view, it's, it was more powerful than I expected it to be, simply because you get back a lot of dead space. I mean the forward screen you know you'd be if you've watched my previous videos you'd be aware you can see the, the dash well the glare shield of the twin otter and the centre post and also the door pillars so those are gone. The right side view is much more unrestricted. I mean in one sense it's less realistic because you don't see anymore the interior of the cockpit but that said sitting in the left seat of the twin otter and looking to the right most of that view was kind of wasted by just seeing the other seat and the extent of the far extent of the instrument panel. So now we've got a, a full view out to the right. I mean it's slightly interrupted by the edge of the instrument panel as it is at this side. But that's somewhat realistic. You can kind of look over that. I'm still getting P3D set up and um, it's not completely satisfactory at the moment. The performance at the moment is okay. I think I might have got a performance boost by going to the external views and ditching the virtual cockpit. Maybe ditching the track IR has been a boost as well. At the moment everything looks far too vivid 
and you know saturated you can probably see in this this is the Skagit Valley that's we've just passed Israel's farm over there concrete municipals up ahead I haven't installed the Orbix concrete at the moment but um, and we've got some weather going we've got active sky so it's looking pretty good but as I say super saturated which is a little bit I'm still playing with that with the lighting effects if I turn on HDR in prepared HDR lighting that doesn't work very well for me I think because of the way the, the TVs well, the TVs seem to have some sort of automatic HDR effect built in or, or something like that so if I turn on HDR for some reason I get very dark center screen and light outer screens and they don't really match up so at the moment they match up pretty well so what else to do my elite radios are off at the moment I do I did find out happily there is a updated uh, sorry 64-bit version of the elite drivers which I've downloaded I forgot to install once I get that in those radios will hopefully work mainly it's for the transponder if I'm going to start flying on pilot edge transponder is very useful to have and the GPS of course this is the native GPS which is rubbish for running on a tiny screen like that you can't it's, it's unusable you can't really read the the labels and the the icons so we'll probably bite the bullet and buy the RXP GNS 530 version 2 it's going to be another 40 or 50 quid no doubt then we should be all set and get down to some serious flying <laughs> I've heard that before I'll probably be still here two years hence making changes and still just about to start serious flying but uh, stay tuned and uh, more to come <laughs>